I'm Eric Draper, Executive Director of Audubon Florida, a statewide conservation organization. The House and Senate have almost identical water bills, and the most important part of that bill is the way that it strengthens state water quality laws. We will see better enforcement and more accountability for those producers of pollution who discharge water into impaired waterways. The water bill also addresses springs protection. Now, Florida springs are in steady decline, both because there's not enough water to keep the springs flowing and because there's a lot of pollution that is going into the springs. So the water bill targets seven of the most important springs in Florida and sets them on a timetable to get the pollution out so they will run clean and puts more water in so that they will run abundantly and we will enjoy our springs in the future. When the voters approved Amendment 1 in 2014, and 75% of the voters approved it, that was 4.2 million people, they had an expectation that the money would be spent on land acquisition. Sadly, the legislature didn't go along with that, and they only spent about $17 million on actually buying land for parks last year, and even that money has been sold. Uh, we're hopeful that the governor will put a generous request for land acquisition, the Florida Forever Program, into his budget, and we're hopeful the legislature will approve that, and we'll be back in the business of protecting the land that is so important to uh, making Florida the special place that it is. Plum Creek was uh, owner of a lot of land in North Florida, and we had been working with Plum Creek on a plan not just to allow them to develop a small footprint of their land, but also to preserve a large amount of the land. Maybe as much as 90% of their land would have been preserved, particularly the more environmentally uh, sensitive areas. We're concerned with wire housing having bought Plum Creek that they may not follow through with Plum Creek's good intentions to preserve land. We know that there's going to be more development around Gainesville. That's just if you've been to Gainesville lately, you know the place is growing very quickly. The question is, will those environmentally sensitive areas around Gainesville be preserved? If we don't have money for Amendment 1, uh, we're pretty much stuck relying on the landowners to uh, put restrictions on the land uses themselves. And what Plum Creek was trying to do was transactional. They'd say, we'll develop some of the land, but we'll protect far more of it with Weyerhaeuser in charge. We just don't know if that's going to be the case.